Hey guys, what is up? My name is Alan, and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be checking out the Aussie Driftco car pack. Yeah, this is a new car pack from the ADC guys. This is their second car pack, and I'm quite excited to try it. These cars are quite lowish horsepower, so kind of like a, I suppose, a rivalry to the WDTS car pack, if any of you guys know what I'm talking about. So um, I think we should hop into the uh, sim and try a few of these cars out, shall we? So the first car that uh, we're going to try is this S14 Zinke. Um, SR20 powered, about 320 horsepower. Uh, it's quite a cool looking mod actually. Let's have a quick zoom around and see what we're looking at here. Um, nice Arjun Labo body kit with a big white body. Uh, well, a white body from the Arjun anyway at least. Interior wise, uh, quite a street style car, right? So we got the cool looking shift knob. Uh, just, a, just a super clean looking car mod. Now if we press the number 8 key, we've now got suddenly a uh, bumperless car. So that is actually quite a cool little thing. Um, that's a CSP patch. Thing, guys so uh, quite a cool little thing we also have some extra lights as you can see pop up in the front bumper so some uh, pretty cool little additions uh, in this little mod but um, I think for me personally um, when it comes to street style car mods like this it's more of the experience of driving the car uh, obviously you got these little quirks you can take off the bumpers and stuff which are pretty cool you know you can turn on the wiper blades and stuff but uh, ultimately that's not what makes a car mod in my per in my opinion uh, obviously people would disagree with me with, with me with that but I do quite like those few touches it is something a little bit unique so here we are we're just driving the car out of the pits here we're on the Meehan um, Sportsland uh, layout C or, or C layout which is the normal you know the very popular famous you know team burst uh, Nakamura style uh, track layout that you guys might be very familiar with um, and first and foremost this car obviously has a lot of force feedback so we better turn that thing down so we've just turned on the force feedback there now let's see what this feels like okay it feels a bit better now on the steering wheel so let's exit the last corner here. Oh, so this car feels um, a little bit dead at the start, I suppose. I mean, for 320 horsepower, it's kind of to be expected. Now, I don't think the car sound really helps that. You know, it sounds a bit dull, right? Um, the car sound makes a massive difference in the car mod, guys. I'm pretty sure there's, there's sounds that you guys don't like and there's other sounds that you guys really do like. And, uh, personally, this is not my favorite four-cylinder sound. I think this is from the Alfa Romeo 4C from Kunos. Um, but it is quite a... Uh, it gets the job done, right? And it's easy enough to replace sounds with whatever you want. Uh, initially, the car actually drives quite nice. I'm quite surprised with the responsiveness of the steering. It has a decent-ish amount of grip. Um... Yeah, it steers quite nicely. It's very well balanced, which, you know, a couple of years ago on AC, that would have been hard to come by. Is It was well-balanced mods. It was either, you know, um, the, the mod was either super grippy or, you know, it was super hard to drive uh, or it was super understeer or oversteer. You know, you never kind of got a good balance. And I have to say, this particular S14 is a very balanced out of this car pack. And I, I assume... All these, uh, all the cars in ADC or in this car pack are all unique. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what that's going to be like once we've got a, a few cars under, under wraps. So let's come out of the last corner again. Upshift the third gear, flick across the track. Nice little entry. Now I am drifting on 98% track grip. Uh, I don't use optimum as much. Uh, for any of you guys wondering, Optimum is 100% track grip. I'm running 98%, which is like fast or something. And I like to run that level amount of grip because I simply think it's a bit more... Um, I don't know, I, th I think it just makes it a bit more uh, drivable. It makes it a little bit more realistic for these particular cars, in my opinion. So next up we have this Jazzy X100 Chaser. Uh, I, I felt like picking this car uh, and, and going to uh, the famous circuit of Ibisu, Manami. Uh, I mean, why not? I mean, I'm sure we press the A8 key, we can take off the front bumper so we can make it a bit of a missile spec, which uh, I mean, why not, right? It makes perfect sense. Uh, again, super simple kind of street style styling, um, which is quite cool. And uh, just like the uh, S14, it's got its own little few quirks and stuff like that. Do we have any extra lighting? I don't think so. Uh, I think we've got wiper blades. We do. Just like the S14, I had to turn on the 4C back. I think it's just set a little bit too high uh, for my particular setup. 
uh, which is completely normal. You guys should always adjust your force feedback depending on the car that you're driving. It's like one of those. It's like it's like a setup change. You just should do it. But um, here we are. We're in this J6100 Chaser on uh, Ibisuma Nami. We're going to do the proper JDM style or, or <laughs> Matsuri style, should I say. Into the jump. Here we go. Let off the gas. Take the jump easily. Oh! <laughs> There's something about kind of trying to actually replicate what people can do in the uh, real life scene with cars and and uh, I have to say this kind of mod does allow to kind of accurately represent what people can do in the real world. Obviously that all comes down to the track too right because if you have a super accurate track then it helps replicate things. Here we go another lap again or another jump. <laughs> I think we're struggling for better power. Again, like like the last time, we are running 98% grip. And I have to say, I've never driven a JZX100 Chaser in the real world. But this car does give a decent amount of feedback and is fairly accurate. Uh, or responsive, should I say. And for me personally, as a driver, I quite like responsive drift cars. Um, you know... I've shared my thoughts before on, on Tandem Buddies and Sly Boys, those type of kind of mods. And I have a video on, on my channel already, which is a bit outdated, I would say. Uh, but there's nothing better than driving a super tricky car. Um, well, I wouldn't, and it's not necessarily tricky, but responsive car. And um, this car does have, you know, a decent amount of uh, feedback, it has quite nice steering. Now, I haven't noticed a massive amount of different um, differences in, in character versus the S14 that we are, that we just drove earlier. Um, now, that kind of makes me wonder, you know, are these cars running the same physics underneath? I'll have to double check that in this moment. I doubt it, but then again, we are driving on a different track, so that doesn't help my, uh, my points. That was, uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> okay, let's do a nice little flick initiation here. Up the hill. Into first gear. Yes, we are using first gear for this one. Right, okay, here we go. I don't think I don't think a 1J could last this long, honestly, without overheating. But here we go, we're doing it anyway. A little bit less angle this time. Oh, oh, oh we ran out of gas. <laughs> that was a bit anticlimactic, honestly. Um, okay, anyway. So our final car is this Pandem kitted BMW E36, uh, M3 S54 powered, I believe so, about 330 horsepower, which is a quite a nice kind of setup for BMW. It's like, you can almost say it's competition spec in that sense, uh, especially in, you know, Europe anyway. But yeah, it's quite a cool car, Pandem kit. I think Pandem kit's probably one of the nicer rocket bunny kits, right? Uh, this particular car has a, <laughs> has a, has a Russian number plate. Um, let's have a look and see what little extra CSP things we have enabled here. Um, anything... I don't see anything disappearing, so I don't see any extra lights. So there's nothing really extra there, only the wiper blades to go really fast. So we'll just turn those off because we, we don't need wiper blades, we're in Japan, guys. Uh, so one thing I just decided to check because uh, I never checked with the chaser, by the way, guys, uh, was the data. And I mentioned earlier that I felt like the data was maybe slightly slimmer to that of the S14, or well, the chaser was anyway. Um, I've just checked the BMW and it does look like all these cars use the same geometry. Now, again, I haven't checked all of these cars, I might be you know, completely wrong, but this BMW seems to run the same geometry as the S14 anyway. Um, a BMW, like if you see this green line in, in, the, in the front wheel here, uh, that's the steering rack position, and in the BMW that should be like in front of the control arm. So this essentially has like a Nissan S chassis 
uh, data front and rear uh, in air quotes right because it's not super accurate AC is not that way so these cards are running what seems like the same geometry uh, on all the cards maybe you know they, they has some different inertia stuff I'm not gonna go into too much detail there um, Kind of, I'll be honest, slightly disappointing. I would prefer to see these cars to have the proper suspension geometry layout. However, these cars are probably aimed to be kind of more beginner spec and having a kind of true baseline of all the cars being the same kind of helps in that sense with tandems and stuff like that. I kind of get it. Um, but I would have preferred to see that being a little bit closer. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It is possible to convert a BMW to rear rack. Um, that's a kind of terminology, but look, <laughs> I don't think it does worth getting too too in-depth with it. Uh, at the end of the day, it is a fun driving mod. So uh, let's see what this E36 is like. And um, yeah, I'll kind of give you guys my final thoughts in the end. So we're on the Sunrise circuit. This is a, a recently uh, released track um, by the 90s GDP guys, I believe is their name. And uh, you guys might have seen this on Nori Yaro with his uh, Bean Can 86. But um, here we go. First lap in E36. Yeah, so, I mean, there's not a huge pile different versus uh, this particular car over the uh, S14 or the JZX. Uh, other than maybe the engine data being slightly different. Car is quite decent, quite neutral. Nice and responsive, which is nice. But it doesn't really have that much character over the um, S14, if that makes sense. Yeah, it drives very similar to that of the S14. It's just easy to drive, right? I mean, it's kind of what you want from a... Oh! Kind of what you want from a low-spec drift car is to be kind of fun and easy to drive. You don't want to be fighting a car trying to make it work that that sucks you want to be able to have fun drifting and, and, and aim for doors which I think this mod is trying to really aim for and I think it's doing a pretty decent job of doing that um, but this track like it's a lot of fun super simple oh this car doesn't really have enough power to pull third gear it's hitting the rev limit in a second I think when they change our gearing actually do a nice little flick. Yes, we're pulling third gear now. Yeah, so like I said, super simple to drive, quite predictable, which I don't think I mentioned before, but these mod, this mod this seems to be very, very predictable. But, yeah, I'm just a little bit disappointed that the cars don't really have that much character. I mean, it does, I think this mod does a pretty good job capturing what a drift car should feel like, and um, kind of the idea of, of how responsive a mod should be, which is kind of important. Uh, AC kind of sometimes lacks that. The cars do seem to have decent, um, realistic feeling. Um, but like I said, they just lack that tiny bit of character between the differences of chassis, uh, which personally I quite like to see in mods. And not everyone likes to see that, but uh, that's my opinion, of course. So that is going to end it for today's video, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, overall, I quite like this mod. Um, like I said, I'm not a fan of the lack of character between the cars. Um, I, I do personally like that. But on the upside, they are very predictable. They are very uh, responsive, which I think is quite important. And they do capture the realness of how a car should drive, which is important, uh, in my opinion. 
um, you know, I, I think that's kind of important on mods. You have plenty of adjustability. The base car setup is quite decent. It's quite easy to pick up and play, which is which is very good for people in, getting into the game. Um, but I could see people kind of outgrowing these cars quite quickly. Um, I think uh, they are great for tandeming and stuff like that, which I think again is important. But it doesn't really change the game in my opinion. Um, but you know what, the cars do look quite decent, uh, they do have some quite fun little quirks, uh, some nice features like wiper blades and stuff, so you can do some a little bit more stuff versus the other existing car mods out there. Um, so yeah, overall, uh, pretty decent mod, uh, probably not something I'm going to use that often, uh, I would say, just simply because uh, I do like the idea of knowing that a car is as close as realistically as possible, um, and unfortunately that BMW at the very end, uh, didn't really capture the realism. Now I might be completely wrong. Maybe the rest of the cars are super realistic, um, and I'll have to double check that. And if and if I'm wrong, I'll put in the comment section below or or in the description below uh, what cars are slightly different, and which cars are actually the exact same. But uh, overall, um, yeah, gets a thumbs up for me. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, we'll be back again very soon for more drifting content, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers and goodbye.